Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat, and um, I wanted to show you guys, I figured out how to make one of these without having to um, get a junk mail envelope that's like this. this. So, um, I need to glue that little spot right there, I just noticed. I just took two envelopes, and it'll probably be pretty self-explanatory once I, you know, kind of show you what I did. I used two um, large envelopes, and they're craft colored envelopes and the nice part about using um, not junk mail is that I was able to you know leave the edges I didn't have to cover over the fold so it t it seems to fold a lot better than um, the other one that I made out of junk mail because I had to cover up all those spots where it folds which obviously makes them thicker and uh, then they don't fold as well so uh, let me show you how I did it I used Sorry, I meant to grab a couple of these uh, craft envelopes that were, I think they're five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Let's see. Why do I always do that? Inches, sorry. Seven and a quarter by five and a quarter, yeah. And so um, they're just a basic envelope. I think I got these ones at Michael's. But you could use any size envelope. I think they would work best with this type of um, closure if you want it to you know tuck inside of there if you don't if you just want to tie it or like I keep catching that or like put a piece of velcro or something like that you could use um, this type and I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference so today for our purposes I'm gonna use these little ones because I want to do a little one for my new journal that I'm working on but um, you can totally do big or small. Oh, I have this. I'm going to put that on there, but I don't have to do that right this minute. That's a little stamp. So, and you don't, if you don't decorate the back, you could end up just gluing it onto your journal page, which is what I might do with this one. So, what I did, these two envelopes are, and you need two envelopes that are the same size. Uh, six and a half by... It's always got to be something weird. Three and one, two, three, five eighths. So they're just the like regular kind of mailing size envelopes. And what you're going to do is just cut a little, and I know I can't get this whole cutter on my screen here. Cut a little sliver off of each side of the envelope. Oh, good, you can see. So I'm not cutting a lot. All I'm basically doing is making it so I can open the envelope. And if you have some envelopes that you've coffee dyed, um, those would work fine because a lot of times they'll already be opened from the uh, moisture in the coffee dye. So then you don't have to worry about cutting the sides off. But if you're just starting with basic white envelopes, then just cutting like that little sliver off just so it'll open up. That's all we're doing. You could cut off, like if you wanted them, you know, shorter this direction or whatever, you can do that too. But um, this one I'm just going to cut the sliver off. Sorry, my cutter is not cutting super great. I need a new blade for it. It's got glue all over it. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one. And if they don't match up totally perfect afterwards, you can just, you know, snip off whatever is not the same size. Sometimes when you cut those little slivers, it's almost harder than if you cut a big chunk of it. So now they're going to open up like this. And you're just going to take this piece and glue it to the back of this piece like that. And I know that doesn't look super great, but um, we're going to be covering all that stuff up, so it really makes no difference. So I'm going to get a little glue on this. I'm just going to use a little bit of this because it does a nice thin amount. And I want to go all the way, you know, along the whole edge so that it doesn't lift. I mean, it really, it's not that big of a deal because you're going to cover all of it, you know, collage on it or just cover it with other papers. And if you use the craft ones, you know, you don't have to cover it with a lot. 
So you want to make sure you get right down to the corner of this envelope, meet it, and right down, you know, you're just lining up that edge so that it's, and it might be easier to tell on this side where it is. Just so you're making like a continuous um, envelope. So you can see my cutting was not great right there, so just fix that. So you can see, I don't know, that's probably a better way. We just attached this lip of the envelope onto there. So they're both just cut open and then this one is just attached to this one here. We're gonna cut this last weird looking piece off entirely. Yeah, I had a, a few people that were saying, everybody's gonna be contacting College of Idaho to get those envelopes <laughs> or you know they're kind of like envelopes those fold out things it was like oh, I bet I can you know figure one out so you don't have to do that so there we are it has the same three folding spots and um, some envelopes are different size this way so if you're folding it and it doesn't want to close then you might have to trim a little bit off and I forgot to mention that so that's something that you need to figure out before you close it up because these bigger ones this is just a tiny bit smaller here than the back so when you unfold it and then you're gluing the back onto it which is this portion right here from here to here it's just a tiny bit bigger so you might have to take a little bit more off um, down here at this bottom if it's not folding upright and then you should be able to get it to fold because that's what I had to do with the one that the big one here that I did I just cut a little bit more off of the bottom to make it um, so it would fold up all right so now we have that so and that's all it is that's you know the basis of it so we can start um, covering that now and I'm going to use some of the papers from my kit and uh, Medieval Mirage and just uh, Manu Design, you know, the same stuff that I was using yesterday. <clears throat> so you guys can stop the video here if you want to or you can keep watching and we're just going to, you can craft along, get a couple of envelopes and take them apart and you can craft along with me. So we're just going to do some collage on these and I may not, this may not be a super long video just because um, I have some stuff I have to go do today, but I wanted to make sure I showed you guys this because I think it's going to be a fun one. I got these off of um, New York Public Library and I just like this blue that's on here. They're just, you know, um, what do they call those? Illuminated manuscripts. From the you know medieval times, they often have super neat drawings and cool stuff in them, and they're very old. So I may use it. I may not. I need to see what it looks like with some other stuff. I'm gonna use some of my paper, and I printed. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about paper. And I printed my kit and all these kits actually that I'm using for this journal on parchment paper. I don't always use parchment paper. I very often use just regular copy paper. But, um, sorry, I'm looking for the box. But I decided after seeing Melody, Melody, you inspired me with um, your parchment paper. She used parchment paper all the way through that journal that she sent me, the Christmas one that I used for um, my December daily, which I haven't finished. <laughs> I told you I might not get to it, but anyway. And so I just really liked the look. So I went and got parchment paper and this is uh, Southworth. And I actually got this at, um, and I kept calling it South Tooth. I don't know, or something like that yesterday. So I apologize. It's Southworth. And I got it at Walmart of all places, but you can also order it on Amazon. And I did order some from Amazon. And it's a little bit different packaging, but it's still the ivory parchment 24 pound paper. 
and I think this one's 24 pound. Yeah, they're the same weight and everything, so it's the same. It's just, I think, a different amount. This one's 80, and this one's, I think, 100. Yeah, 100 sheets, so that's the only difference. So that is what I have printed on for this uh, journal. But that's not true for every journal that I make. A lot of times I just print on regular copy paper. So it's whatever um, you like. Don't, you don't have to use anything in particular. Of course, the uh, better quality of the paper, probably the better print you're going to get. Um, the color quality and all that. But, I mean, this wasn't super expensive paper, and I think these printed out really nice. So... Um, it's just your personal preference for what paper. There's nothing that you have to use or, you know, whatever. So use what you like, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it doesn't have to be expensive paper to have a nice journal. So, all right, so we're just going to start collaging. And it's not going to be any particular rhyme or reason. So again, this is my um, Winter Wonder paper. And I really like this. There's like a little snowy image. It's, it, this is all collaged and then painted over and stuff. So a lot of the images aren't like super vivid because that's not what I was going for. I was going for more of that blizzardy, snowy, just January. That was kind of my take on this. So that's why it's all sort of muted tones and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm going to leave those folds free. I'm going to ink them, but I'm going to leave them so they can bend because I really like the, how flat uh, this one turned out. It just folds up a whole lot better than the other one that I did. So I'm, I'm liking that. So this is actually a better way, in my opinion, than the um, junk mail version because it's not as thick and it folds up better. So that takes up less room in your journal. I need to tear that edge off. Is this one? No. And of course, you know, if you coffee dyed these, they would look better. I just didn't have time, you know, before today to do that. So I just, I'll just ink them. That's not a big deal to me. You could gesso them and like, you know, put a little ink with it, with the gesso. If you wanted to do something like that, you could stamp them. Lots of things you could do. But I'm just going to ink them when I'm done. just thinking maybe now would be better because then I get a better coverage and I'm just doing a quick see change my mind a million times within three seconds right it'll just give us a nice coat on there and I don't have to make it super dark that way so it'll be easy to cover glued down all the way but again when you're um, when you collage over the top of that it'll glue it down so sorry I know this is boring you can fast forward if you hate this And, you know, the sticky on the envelope doesn't matter because it's going to get covered up too. So don't worry about that either. Hope you guys are having a good day. It's morning here, so I haven't got very far in the day yet, but we got errands to run. I'm 
need to get kids haircuts and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Almost done. I hope all of you have a very happy and safe New Year's Eve. We're not probably doing a whole lot. Might go over to some friends for a bit, but I really don't like being out um, driving on New Year's Eve. So I generally don't do a lot of that. I'm not much of a party guy anyway, so. Not my thing. But yeah, just be safe because crazy. They're saying a million people in Times Square tonight and they're saying it's the safest place in the world <laughs> because of all the security. I can't imagine standing in those pin things all day long and no bathrooms. The whole thing's crazy. I just don't ever think I could do that. I've been to New York and it was crazy enough not on New Year's Eve. Okay, that's going to go there and then I have some Medieval Mirage and I have some different pieces that I've printed out of different kits. This is from Medieval Odyssey um, and this is volume one and so it's kind of got similar uh, sepia toned floral kind of images. And there's all different papers in Medieval Odyssey. These aren't the only ones. So it's not, it doesn't, the whole kit doesn't look like this. It, if you um, get a chance, go over and check out uh, Josh. She's super kind. And I appreciate those of you that have shown her some support already. She's a very kind, generous lady. And uh, so, yeah, and does beautiful artwork, as you can see. And I'm not going to leave it like uh, perfectly all the way across there like that. I want more of a jagged tear on this. I like that look. I was happy to hear some of you commented that, you know, this did work together because I thought it did. But, you know, sometimes <clears throat> my idea and somebody else's idea are two different things, but I just think they're fun together. It's good. This would be an awesome, like, way to use up scraps, too. Like, just do all different, you know, papers that kind of go together. which is essentially what this is. I just don't have scraps of a lot of these. Well, this page was in my in my folder already, so that was a good one to use. And I might take a bit of this. I just want a little bit of it. Almost like washi tape or something. So I'm having fun doing these. These are a lot of fun and something different. Um, it reminds me of the, you know, like stacked envelopes, but instead of like three envelopes, it's just two opened up. So 
so you can write on them and stuff like that. Which I'll do the same thing that I did and make. Um, oh, this was that's the writing spot, so I guess that's all the writing spot you get. I forgot that bottom one is the writing one. I mean, you could make any of them a writing one, but that was the way I did the other ones. Right, there's that and then this will have paper over it so you don't have to make it very fancy I did in my other ones I still you know decorated all of it but you can do it however you like just want a piece of this maybe I'll just use like a piece of it Oh, this is, this is from Joff too. This one is Medieval Fragments. This nice blue. I just thought this icy blue was a good one. And that's Volume 1, Parchment Pages. So you can see I'm using lots of different um, kits of hers. I'm not just using one. So that's why I think this would be great for scraps, because you could just use it all kinds of different stuff. Okay, I don't need all of that, so... Oh, that wasn't good measuring at all. Surprise, surprise. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys because I added something to this yesterday. I took um, a piece of this and just cut it off over here, the edge, and just um, glued it along there with a little bit of lace just to bring the blue over here. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you that so that if you wanted to do something like that. Turned out pretty good. just about gone. Yeah. Starts kind of catching and being weird at the end. my son finishing up with his cold. He's <laughs> better than he was, so that's good. Alright, we need something else over here. We can do some of the Manu paper. Um, you know which one I want. These snowy trees are really cool. Oh, they about take up the whole thing, don't they? Maybe they'll just do like that much. that straight at all. Here. 
So this is Manny Design Studio is where I got this um, wintry paper and it's called Snow Delicious, I believe. I just want that a little not perfectly torn. <laughs> you know how to do that. <laughs> So yeah, I hope this is helpful um, for people that wanted to make these because they are kind of fun to do. And it's a, you know, like I said, you could glue it down on the back, and then you um, could just have it glued to a page, or you can put it in a pocket, and you can make any size envelope. Like you could even make envelopes on. Um, your envelope little cutter you know that makes envelopes <laughs> or die cuts of them or whatever that one's done So like I said, that will have um, some sheets of paper over it. This one I want to put a pocket on. So I'll use a little bit of this. This is from my um, Winter Wonder. Busy. or a, you know, already finished tatting piece that I found in a antiques shop. It's very pretty. Kind of reminds me of snowflakes a little bit. No, not that way. This one. Oh, God, too big again. Doing that. And this part, you don't have to cover all the way to the bottom if you're going to put a pocket, but I just fits, so <laughs> that's where it's going. I really like the parchment paper. I've never you know, really used the parchment paper before, but I love how it comes out, and I feel like you'd, you could coffee stain it, but I feel like if you don't, it still has that kind of, you know, ivory, speckly look on the back, so um, I really like the way it looks. And it is more expensive, obviously, than coffee paper, but, you know, it's not, like, awful. I thought that was going to be all right, but it's not going to stay down without them there. I have this from Joff. I think I'll use that. I'm going to cut it out though because it's okay. Where are all my scissors over here? Got this edge. It's um, it's meant to be a pocket. Oh, if I put a pocket there, you're not going to see it, so that might not be a good place. And it's not big enough to be a pocket all the way across, which is what I'm kind of liking for that. So. Maybe I won't worry about that right now. I could just take a portion of it and put it. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Just kind of tear that off. got a little white that'll work the bottom I'll just ink because like I said we're gonna put a pocket there 
Then I might need one more little thing. Not sure what I'm going to use for the pocket. I've been using Gail's trims, which I suck in here because I've been taking this downstairs and using it. I've got all kinds of junk in here. I don't think I have any left that will go very well. I kind of like just the lace ones for this. I mean, I can print more out, too. That might be kind of neat if I just take a portion of it. Okay. So, let's see. I don't think I want that big of a pocket. I think I just want, like, half. I'm just going to tear it. Try to sort of get it straight here. Go just a little bit more. That has also a very snowy sort of look about it. And then I have been scoring it and um, folding the side in. gotten used to this thing yet. How long is this? Eight. And I don't want it that big. I only need it. What did I say? Oh, where did I go? So it's not quite six and a half. Do seven. And then we'll score it at um, quarter. They're not going to be equal, but it's not going to matter. It's just the fold that goes in. And it's not quite six and a half, is it? I'm going to have to cut off more. Six and a half. Let me see. That's what I don't like about things not being like um, the right size. It's like just, oh, it was over six and a half. Let me see what I do. It's me trying to math, you know, it doesn't work. So I need to make that bigger. I'm just going to come this way a little bit more. And it's not, um, you know, a particular size, really. It makes it tricky, so that worked. So you're just going to have to measure your envelope and figure out. You just need like little flaps and it doesn't matter if they're the same size because nobody's going to see that. I do like to cut these at an angle so that you don't see the edges of them. I'll take a little bit more off of this one because I guess it would sort of change the way it's on there, glued on. Let's get this piece inked and on. And I'm not worried about the straight bottom on that because you're not going to see it. I'm going to ink it a little more down here just so that if you can see in the envelope at all, it looks normal.
And we'll just finish this pocket and then I'll let you guys go because I got, like I said, I got stuff I got to do. And then we can finish this another time or I'll just finish it off. I'm sure you get the idea. We did a whole one of these the other day and then, you know, showed you how to make the envelopes. So it's not like you have to see the entire thing again. Come on, scoot down a little bit. There we go. <laughs> I just didn't want to scoot at all. So then you can put some little tags or something in there and see this just folds up much better than um, the junk mail. So I really am liking doing it with the two envelopes much better. So again, just cut the sides off your envelopes um, and then open them up. Glue one flap down to the where that weird V is in your envelope and then cut that bottom flap off and then you'll have the and like this and it works great so i hope you guys have an awesome day if you like my videos please like and subscribe and we'll chat again soon um have a very happy new year and be safe bye bye now